So maybe I can start uh, with introducing Professor Yamamoto. Okay, let's start. Uh, so very welcome to the sixth round of BTR conference. Uh, we are very uh, pleased to have Professor uh, Toshiyoki Yamamoto with us, uh, giving the first headline talk uh, in our sixth BTR conference. Professor Yamamoto is a, a professor in civil engineering and sustainable systems at uh, Japan's Nagoya University. His PhD is from Kyoto University in 2000 uh, and uh, with a work on household vehicle ownership and use. And he has worked at uh, INRETS, um, now it's called IF. As double TAR in France and the University of Washington as a visiting scholar. His research interests include next uh, generation mobility, activity travel behavior, and traffic safety. And he's leading a project on cost reduction of hybrid uh, renewable energies powered by hydrogen stations. He serves as associate editor for Transportation, which is a very prestigious uh, journal, and is a member of TRB's uh, uh, travel uh, Behavior and Values Committee and the International Conference on Transportation Survey Methods Steering Committee. Uh, so without uh, further ado, uh, I, I hand it over to you, Professor Yamamoto. Um, please, uh, the audience, uh, keep asking your questions or uh, sharing your thoughts with us on the chat box. And after uh, the talk uh, from Professor Yamamoto, I, I will read the questions and we start brainstorming and uh, doing the Q&A. Uh, thank you so much. Over to you, Professor Yamamoto. Uh, thank you for the kind uh, introduction. Uh, my name is Toshi Yamamoto from uh, Nagoya University, Japan. Uh, my, my today's topic is uh, hydrogen chicken and egg uh, on uh, hydrogen fuel cell uh, vehicle ownership and the acceptance of hydrogen fueling uh, stations. And then uh, uh, again, thank you for uh, giving me uh, this opportunity uh, to the uh, conference organizer and then a uh, chairing session by uh, Eli. Um, I also would like to mention the, my collaborators. Uh, Rua Khan was uh, my doctor post student and then now working as a specialist at uh, UNAP. Uh, uh, research on the uh, first half of uh, my talk. And then Hitomi Sato is a designated associate professor. And then uh, he, she is uh, also involved in the both uh, parts of the presentation, mainly on the survey um, uh, instrument and so on. And then the, the third one is uh, Ning Fan. Uh, he's uh, now a postdoc researcher uh, with my, uh, in my uh, laboratory uh, research group, okay? So I'd like to start my talk, and then at first uh, about uh, green hydrogen. Uh, you know, you know, you may know global warming, and then the global climate change and the energy crisis uh, called uh, for sustainable energy transition, and then uh, uh, Paris Agreement, uh, which is a established net zero emission target in uh, 2016, um, and then the hydrogen is uh, one of the possibilities, and then. Uh, especially for the heating and aerospace and the transportation. Um, so we are looking at the hydrogen. And then uh, in Japan, an um, uh, initiative to support the transition to a uh, carbon-free society, uh, we became the first country in the world to re release a national hydrogen strategy in uh, 2017. Uh, it's, uh, including uh, uh, overall broad objective and then hydrogen industry strategy and the hydrogen safety strategy. Yes, because uh, yes, safety is one of the issues uh, related to the hydrogen. Uh, we will uh, talk about uh, high, uh, safety in the uh, second half of the uh, presentation. And then uh, following this milestone, uh, prominent infrastructure developers and uh, automakers uh, formed a consortium in Japan uh, to build the uh, initial 80 hydrogen refueling stations to support widespread use of uh, fuel cell vehicles. But uh, so far, it, it is not so successful, I think. Uh, you can see the, the pictures uh, at the hydrogen fuel cell stations in Japan, and we took uh, these uh, photos in uh, uh, Aichi Prefecture. 
how we distribute to the survey questionnaire seats. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, the uh, Toyota Mirai uh, was commenced uh, in Japan in December 2014. Since then, they have uh, sold, uh, sold uh, you know, uh, the vehicles in Japan and also in on abroad. And then you can see here the global distribution of uh, hydrogen refueling stations and, and then hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Um, and then in 2020, uh, Asia and Europe are the regions with the highest number of hydrogen refueling stations, led by Japan and also uh, this area uh, holding 65% uh, of the world hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in 2020. But uh, the, the situation is uh, drastically changing. And then uh, looking at the sales in 2022, uh, Hyundai Nexo uh, sold uh, 10,000 uh, units. And then uh, Toyota Mirai sold uh, uh, about 4,000 units. So the, uh, the, the number in uh, uh, Korea, South Korea is increasing rapidly. Uh, looking at the uh, uh, hydrogen filling stations in Japan, uh, you can see uh, the map here and then the, uh, more uh, stations around the uh, you know, big uh, metropolitan area like uh, Tokyo and then uh, Osaka and Nagoya area. Uh, in uh, 2023, we have uh, 166 hydrogen refueling stations uh, in Japan. And then if we, we look at the uh, fuel cell vehicle fleet, along the year in Japan, as I mentioned, uh, from uh, 2014, uh, Toyota Mirai uh, has been sold, and then uh, we have uh, more and more uh, fleet, uh, a larger number of fleet in uh, 2023. Uh, if we look at the uh, uh, relationship between the first vehicle fleet and then the filling station by prefecture, uh, you know, if uh, we have a larger number of uh, stations, we have a larger number of fuel cell vehicles, and then Aichi has the largest number of fuel cell vehicles in Japan. Uh, and then uh, second is uh, Tokyo. It's a uh, uh, most uh, you know, uh, populated areas. And then uh, uh, the second most populated area, like Osaka, has uh, a lower number of fuel cell vehicles. I don't know why, but maybe uh, you know the Aichi is an exception because. Uh, IG has a uh, uh, Toyota Motor Corporation in that in our area, right? But it is uh, also affected by the, the size of the uh, land on also population. So we calculated uh, fair cell vehicle share and then referring station density uh, by prefecture. And that uh, it changes a little. And then Tokyo has the highest uh, uh, population, uh, no, uh, station density and as well as the uh, highest uh, share of uh, fuel cell vehicles. And then uh, IG uh, became the second, right? And then Osaka has the third uh, most uh, high density area of a uh, uh, fueling station. But uh, again, the fuel cell vehicle share is lower than other areas, okay? Other areas. Uh, and then looking at the uh, fuel cell vehicle share, it is not a typo, but uh, it is still less than 0.05%. It is very small, yeah? And then if we uh, talk about, uh, you know, the, the innovation, the diffusion of innovation theory, uh, they are, uh, you know, the uh, first one is the innovator. It is uh, called, uh, regarded as 2.5%, okay? So the current situation for uh, fair cell vehicle is less than 2.5%, much less than that. So the, it is uh, uh, called as a tech enthusiast uh, by this uh, author, and then it is really true. And then uh, it, it hasn't reached to the chasm of the, chasm of the uh, uh, diffusion, but not yet uh, reached uh, to this point. But uh, we looking at uh, uh, the, this uh, tech enthusiast uh, uh, and then also consumer preference for the fair cell vehicles, uh, looking at the social demographics and the incentives. Then we uh, carried out uh, uh, internet survey in IT prefecture. Again, 
This is the highest, uh, this has the highest number of uh, fuel cell vehicles in Japan. And then uh, we uh, did the screening uh, question on uh, what to buy in next two years. And then we uh, selected the 500 potential car buyers in two years. Okay. And then uh, we ask about the social economic characteristics. And also uh, we ask about the stated preference and then discrete choice experiments. Uh, by the way, uh, in uh, Nagoya, around Nagoya and area, we have many uh, fair cell, uh, fair, uh, referring station. No, uh, hydrogen referring station. Okay. Uh, if we look at the sample distribution of social demographic attributes, it is not so uh, different from the population uh, of Japan. Uh, we have uh, uh, you know age groups uh, distribution here, and also the income distributions here. And then I will show you in the in the in the later pages on the uh, uh, different subgroups, and then it was uh, really different from this figure. So if possible, please remember this uh, shape. And then also the number of vehicles owned uh, also uh, very uh, natural. And then uh, looking at the reasons for car purchase, uh, you know, the most of the reasons are uh, replacement of current old vehicles. It is really reasonable. And also to buy a new car for the uh, new household, maybe. Uh, and then uh, uh, those are the two uh, dominant reasons for the next car purchase. Uh, we also asked about the knowledge on fair cell vehicles, and then uh, more than 15% has uh, no knowledge on the fair cell vehicles, but uh, other, uh, others have uh, several uh, knowledge on fair cell vehicles, and then availability of uh, hydrogen filling or uh, hydrogen as an alternative fuel technology. Uh, those are the, uh, uh, the um, two. Uh, knowledge is on among the respondents. Uh, and then now uh, we also ask about uh, you know the uh, vehicle type they are currently own. And then uh, as uh, imagined, uh, most of the respondents have uh, conventional uh, gasoline vehicles, more than 80 percent, and then smaller percentage of uh, uh, respondents have uh, uh, plug-in hybrid or just hybrid cars, uh, including Prius or something. And then uh, only 1.3% have uh, uh, battery electric vehicle. It is uh, still, uh, you know, the uh, innovators, but looking at the fair cell vehicles, only 0.1%, it is uh, uh, consistent with the uh, national uh, statistic, but uh, it's really difficult to get the uh, actual uh, fair cell vehicle owners. And then we uh, asked about the uh, uh, interest in the fuel uh, te technology in the next vehicles. And then the, the, uh, the distribution may changes. And then uh, a battery electric vehicles has uh, uh, inter uh, interest uh, more than uh, 13%. And then uh, for the fuel cell vehicles, it uh, goes up to, but uh, still less than 5% of the respondents have the interest in the uh, uh, fair cell uh, electric vehicle technology. But uh, we assume this 4% of the respondents as a potential buyer uh, in the current, under the current situation. So we compare this potential buyers and the other respondents in the, in the following pages. So we compare the, uh, the um, uh, potential uh, fair cell vehicle buyers and others in the, in uh, in terms of uh, social economic variables and then uh, some uh, other factors and then we found that uh, you know the battery electric vehicle experience had a uh, uh, difference uh, between the two groups and then other than that we didn't have any find any differences between the two groups so the if someone use battery electric vehicles, they realize the uh, lack of a uh, driving range or short driving range, then they may have uh, interest in the uh, fuel cell vehicles because of the longer uh, driving range, maybe. It's uh, our, our speculation. And then also we look at the uh, other types of uh, social demographics. And then 
uh, major one is the uh, uh, household income difference uh, between the potential buyer and the others. And then uh, because uh, uh, currently the price of the hydrogen facial vehicles is very expensive so that uh, uh, potential buyer is a uh, uh, high income household. And then uh, we also ask about the reasons for the car purchase. And then we compare that, and then we found that the intention to adopt new fuel technology or the shift to vehicle with good mileage or zero carbon emissions. So uh, maybe the potential fuel cell vehicle buyer is a tech enthusiast, as I mentioned in the literature. And then uh, about the knowledge on fuel cell vehicles, uh, obviously, uh, we have uh, many uh, difference between the potential buyers and others, and then they have, potential buyer has a higher uh, knowledge, a better knowledge on the fair sale vehicles, as you can understand. Uh, and then uh, we uh, did the uh, state preference survey, uh, including the uh, purchase price and then the uh, uh, fair availability and then uh, referring charging time, and then uh, policy incentives are the, uh, the variables. And then also we have uh, fixed uh, variables, uh, including driving range and the pollution levels. And then four uh, choice tasks for each respondent are, are used, and then to estimate the uh, choice models. Uh, let's, the, the table shows the result of the parameter estimate, and then uh, on the right-hand side, you can see the interpretations. Um, we did a uh, um, panel mixed logic model of a vehicle type, cho type, vehicle type, vehicle type choice, including uh, 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 gasoline vehicles and then plug-in and hybrid and then uh, battery electric vehicles and the cell vehicles. And then you can see the uh, standard deviation of the uh, alternative specific constant. Then uh, unobserved preference heterogeneity is um, identified by a large standard deviation of uh, uh, of the estimate and also price and then uh, also uh, recharging uh, uh, recharging time uh, significantly negatively affect the choice as you can imagine with uh, significant heterogeneity also again so the, this effect this effect is uh, has a, a large heterogeneity among respondents and then also we had uh, insignificant and somewhat uh, difficult to interpret results on the fuel availability. So we have uh, different types of owners, but uh, we had a uh, 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 little strange results. So uh, it might be uh, difficult to understand the uh, fuel availability uh, by the respondents. Well, we, we are not sure about these results. Okay, about uh, policy incentives, uh, we got uh, uh, positive in impact uh, of the free parking, uh, free public parking for the alternative fare vehicle owners, and then free public transport for non owners uh, currently, and then total exemption uh, for a part of multi vehicle owners because we have a higher um, standard deviations uh, in the uh, parameter estimates. And then also uh, some of the uh, insignificant questions of policy attributes are in line with the literature, but uh, uh, we are not sure about uh, this uh, uh, insignificant results. Um, about the social economic variables, uh, we have uh, some variables as a positive uh, has a positive effect on fair cell vehicles, including uh, apartment parking. Because uh, in that case, it is difficult to utilize a battery electric vehicles or plug-in hybrid vehicles. So it's better to choose uh, fair cell vehicles if someone want uh, you know, the new technologies. And then also uh, high education is uh, one of the uh, uh, factors to uh, favor the fair cell vehicles. And then negative impact on uh, fair cell vehicles, including male, uh, house, the husband, and then high current vehicle price, and then current alternative fair, fair vehicle owners and no car owners. And then the mail is a contrast to the to the literature, but uh, we think uh, we have uh, uh, many different uh, variables, and then maybe the some corre uh, correlation with the the variable mail. 
So we uh, we have to think about the uh, uh, gender difference or the you know attitude toward uh, uh, attitude difference among the respondents uh, on this uh, part. And then about the uh, current alternative fair vehicle owners, it might mean the newer car owners, so they don't ha have to change the, uh, the vehicles uh, in a, a next. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, next uh, replacement timing, but I, we are not sure. And then we also uh, get uh, correlation among alternatives and then uh, battery electric vehicles and then a fair cell vehicle has uh, uh, unobserved correlation as uh, expected. And then it is also the consistent with the uh, uh, nested logit model we estimated like this one. So again, the non fair has a, a, an observed correlation uh, in, the, uh, in the model estimates. Uh, we also compare the model, but uh, I will skip the explanation. So the finding is that the uh, uh, potential buyer of uh, fair cell vehicles are uh, uh, high education and then uh, apartment parking and the shorter referring time and lower price. Uh, we, those include uh, increase the uh, utility of uh, fair cell vehicles. And then also uh, potential buyer shows a greater intention to adopt new technologies, car with a longer mileage and then zero emissions uh, vehicles, so tech enthusiasts. And then uh, uh, potential car buyers, uh, potential fair cell vehicle buyers has greater knowledge, of course, on uh, fair cell vehicle related technologies. So on the policy incentive, uh, free public parking, a toll exemption, and a free transit ticket positively impact the prefer preferences, but only on the some segments. So we have to uh, think about a uh, segment-based policy or something uh, to, uh, to get the higher uh, efficiency uh, on uh, uh, the policy. But this is just on potential uh, buyers, not actual buyer. So the next uh, research is uh, on uh, uh, understanding uh, actual fair cell vehicle adapters. So we uh, did uh, um, a web survey, but uh, we did the recruiting at the hydrogen station on the four locations in uh, Aichi Prefecture and also uh, mail from the Toyota city government because uh, uh, they, uh, uh, the respondents who applied for the local government FCB incentives, so we know the, the, the address of the uh, owners. So we uh, get uh, a response uh, uh, and then the sample size is only 89. So it is very small, but still we think it is uh, uh, meaningful because uh, you know the, the number of fair cell vehicle owner is, uh, itself is very, uh, the number is very small uh, in a, in a society, right? So the a part part A of the survey is social economic characteristics, and then part B includes the uh, attitudes toward fair cell vehicles. And then we uh, compare these results with the uh, uh, potential uh, car buyers. Okay, and then looking at the uh, age distribution, we have a more uh, older uh, respondents for the actual. Adapters. And also, uh, we have a very high number of uh, high income households, right? So it is really different from the uh, potential or the uh, non adapters. Uh, and then the adapters are high income and also old, uh, old person. And then uh, uh, we have a very uh, higher number of uh, uh, respondents who said uh, the reason for the car purchase is uh, interest in new field technology so they can afford this kind of uh, a trial uh, in the in a car ownership and also we have uh, a higher number of uh, response respondents who uh, stated associated uh, government incentive is uh, uh, the reason for choosing hydrogen fuel cell vehicles so it is a really uh, important policy measures to uh, to increase the, the diffusion of the fair cell vehicle, as you can imagine. And then uh, we compare the social demographics of uh, actual fair cell vehicle owner and then uh, respondents of the potential car buyer survey. It is uh, non-owners, actually. 
but uh, you can see that all elements uh, have uh, uh, different uh, uh, statistics. And then we can see the uh, more male and then higher education is uh, 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 observed for the actual uh, fair cell week owners. And also they have uh, experience on uh, hybrid vehicles uh, as well as uh, a battery electric vehicle. So they are actually uh, tech enthusiasts. And then uh, looking at the other social economic status and all factors are very different. And then uh, uh, fair cell vehicle owners has higher income and then uh, older and then uh, smaller sample, uh, household size, and then uh, larger number of uh, vehicles owned. Also, we compared the uh, uh, reasons for the car purchase, and then uh, uh, very different reasons uh, for the for the actual um, fair fair vehicle owners. Uh, again, uh, it's also on uh, knowledge on fair fair vehicle. It is of course very different between the two groups. So uh, we can say that the current uh, fair cell vehicle owners in Japan is uh, mostly male of uh, 60 plus years old, very old male, and then uh, high social demographic status. And also they have a uh, higher uh, knowledge and attitude towards the uh, fair cell vehicle. So it's uh, a kind of a uh, tech enthusiast. But we also found that uh, you know the more uh, owners get uh, uh, that got the fair cell vehicles by lease, uh, it is still uh, lower than the uh, purchase. But uh, uh, comparing with the the, the general um, owner of the car, ratio of lease car is uh, much higher. Uh, than the, the average in Japan, which is uh, five only 5%, but you can see here 22% of the uh, actual owners got the car by lease. Lease, which means, uh, you know, yeah, contract based, uh, you know, the two, two years or three years and so short compared to the, to the actual uh, purchase uh, and then uh, holding the vehicles uh, in the longer period of time. So we are concerned about uh, it, uh, about uh, uh, the uh, you know replacement of the, for that for the next vehicle of these uh, actual owners. So we uh, analyze the understanding uh, uh, intention to keep or replace personal vehicles by the actual uh, current owners, and then the the result is shown here. Okay, um, more than half of the respondents or actual fair cell vehicle owners stated that uh, uh, they will differently replace or probably replace and then uh, to the to the other types of vehicles than the fair cell vehicles okay so the, the diffusion is not uh, um one way but in some cases it's a, a rebound or some you know going back to the original or something so it's uh, really uh, important to understand why uh, they are uh, going back to other uh, fair types and then uh, to in order to um, encourage people to keep and then uh, uh, increase the uh, diffusion. Okay. And then we compare the uh, two groups, uh, you know, the keeping or replacing the uh, fair cell vehicles. And then, uh, and then uh, we didn't get, a, we didn't find any a difference between the two groups in uh, uh, social uh, demographic uh, uh, attributes shown here. And then uh, uh, we found that the uh, uh, level of satisfaction are uh, different between the two groups. Uh, one of them is uh, fuel tank safety. So the, the, the satisfaction level is, if it is low, then they will replace the vehicle to other types of fuels. And also the, uh, satisfaction level of number of stations is low, and then uh, they will uh, replace the vehicle to other types of vehicles. So the, the safety, and then the, uh, you know, the number of stations on uh, um, uh, hydrogen refueling station is very important uh, for the, for the uh, keeping them to own the hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, okay? 
Uh, also, we are looking at uh, other types of uh, 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 things, and then uh, we found that the uh, uh, driving range in uh, comparison to the um, hydrogen, no, sorry, uh, plug-in hybrid or hybrid is uh, 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 one of the uh, key uh, characteristics of the uh, vehicles, uh, vehicle performance of the uh, hydrogen fuel vehicles, okay? But it is not the focus of our study so much. Okay, and then uh, we, if we look at, uh, we asked about the reason of the replacing current current hyd hydrogen phaser vehicles for the for the who answered to replace, and then uh, the most of the uh, respondents uh, answer that the few hydrogen station, as uh, shown in the previous slide, previous pages, and also uh, they mentioned the station business hours. Okay, why? Because in Japan. Uh, it is the hydrogen fuel refueling station has uh, limited business hours because of the regulation on refueling by service staff, not by uh, self service uh, like uh, in a uh, uh, conventional uh, uh, petrol uh, uh, gasoline stations. So it's uh, really a disadvantage on uh, uh, re uh, hydrogen refueling stations, uh, not. In uh, in a uh, mid mid midnight or some uh, you know the some uh, uh, after the working schedule and so on. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, can be uh, uh, overcome uh, in the in the near future or uh, changing the regulation maybe because uh, we when we visited uh, Norway it uh, I I I showed in the in the. Uh, in the first slides, and then uh, they are allowed. They are allowed to uh, do a, a self service at the at the filling station, uh, fuel stations. Okay, and then we estimated also the binary logical model on the intention to keep or replace fuel cell vehicles, and then we found ah, uh, you can see the, the bold uh, letters as a uh, uh, significant variables. As I mentioned, satisfaction of uh, driving range is important as a, 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 a performance uh, of the vehicles and also uh, the satisfaction of future viability becomes a significant uh, factor. And then the, another thing is that the density of stations at city level, it is an objective value we calculated from the, uh, uh, the uh, GIS database. And then it becomes uh, became uh, insignificant. And also about the satisfaction on number of stations, this is a subjective uh, evaluation, but still it is not uh, sig not significant in this uh, uh, model based results. Okay, uh, and then uh, but uh, we we think that the small sample size and also the lack of variation because we only got the uh, data from IT prefecture, it is uh, less variation in the residential location compared to the uh, nationwide. So those might have caused uh, insignificant questions estimates. And also, uh, we also did a uh, uh, multicollinearity uh, test, like uh, vari variance inflation factor, but we couldn't uh, see any uh, High, high correlation among the expanded variables, but still uh, the, the small sample size and then uh, lack of variation might have caused these results. So again, uh, the, the findings of the, the, this part is uh, our respondents who would like to continue this continue on uh, fuel vehicles uh, have a different uh, uh, perceptions on the future viability and the fuel tank safety and the number of stations. And then the fuel tank safety and then the number of stations are, you know, are considered in the second half of my presentation, but it's uh, running out of time already. And then uh, results also repeat the uh, respondent satisfaction level. And then uh, those are, are different uh, between the keeping or discontinuing the ownership, okay? Okay, so going to the second half, uh, societal effects of hydrogen refueling facilities and then public perceptions and acceptance. This is uh, as a result of our collaborative project, SUSI, 
uh, supported by uh, Concert Japan. Um, uh, first, I'd like to explain about the, uh, the types of hydrogen, uh, referring uh, types of hydrogen. If uh, it is made from the non-renewable uh, fossil fuels, it is called as gray hydrogen, but uh, the, um, most of the CO2 emissions are captured, then it is called as uh, blue hydrogen. And then if the, the energy is uh, made from a renewable energy, then it is called as green hydrogen, okay? And also we have different types of stations. And then uh, if the production is on site, it is called as on-site station. And then if we, it is uh, production is outside the station and then transport by the truck, and then it is called as off-site station. And then uh, you may know the, uh, some uh, uh, recent hydrogen safety events uh, shown here. We have uh, several uh, accidents uh, related to the uh, hydrogen uh, station, but others are not about the hydrogen uh, filling station, but the chemical plant and so on. But uh, some people may know about this kind of uh, event and then others not. Um, and also we calculated the uh, uh, perceived risk of the hydrogen refilling station related to compressor and then high pressure storage tank and then trailers and dispensers. Uh, then we found that uh, more uh, risk uh, resulted from a production and also storage part uh, because of the compressor. So the, uh, the compressor being the largest source of risk as shown here, but it is still, those are still very low uh, frequency of uh, uh, catastrophic failure and then as well as uh, minor failures. Uh, in uh, uh, per year. So we uh, research focuses on, uh, uh, you know, uh, related to the uh, perceptions and then also the uh, subjective acceptance of the people. Uh, we carried out a questionnaire survey as shown here in uh, 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 Japan and then Spain and Norway. Uh, and then also we did uh, 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 questionnaire survey on uh, general public and also the local legends around the uh, fair uh, uh, fair uh, referring station. And then uh, this is the question, one of the, uh, a part of the questions, uh, and then uh, you may understand, uh, you may answer the question, like uh, hydrogen is lighter than air or not, and then uh, uh, like uh, how green hydrogen fair cell products depend mostly on high, how hydrogen is obtained and so on. So uh, respondents answer these questions to we evaluate the uh, objective knowledge on the hydrogen, okay? So then, then uh, the answer is shown here, right? Uh, hydrogen is lighter than air, true. And then uh, like uh, uh, the hydrogen, uh, how green hydrogen cell product depends mostly on how hydrogen is obtained, it's true. So the how more than half answered correctly, as true here. And then also the uh, less, uh, less than 25% uh, answered correctly as true. And then uh, most of the uh, people answer don't know, okay, to uh, some of the questions, right? And then we also uh, uh, asked about subjective knowledge level uh, as well as objective knowledge level, and then we can compare these two, but uh, I will skip in the detail. Okay, and then uh, we also asked about the uh, uh, perception of uh, likelihood of accident and also the severity of the accident. These two uh, side, two phases of the accident uh, might be different, uh, differently perceived. Uh, so we asked that uh, two uh, dimensions of the accident, perceived accident. And then this is the, uh, this shows the result of the uh, Japanese case. And then you can see here uh, on the uh, uh, risk probability and then consequence on the, each uh, part of the uh, hydrogen filling, refilling station and then including transportation and then production. So they have uh, very similar answers uh, regardless of the uh, parts of the uh, 
you know, hydrogen filling station. And then you can see the more uh, respondents answer the moderate uh, probability and the moderate consequence. It is not really good for the questionnaire survey. Uh, and then also we ask about uh, uh, the risk information seeking behavior and then how important or how uh, you think about uh, this kind of in, uh, information that are uh, important. And again, we have a larger share of, uh, you know, in the middle category here, okay? And then it reminds us, uh, you know, response style by the, in the literature. We have uh, several uh, response style. And then uh, the third one, middle category response are sh shown in the previous pages. And then also in the literature, it is said that the middle category response is typical for Japanese. And then we found that this is a kind of, uh, uh, you know, the middle category or midpoint uh, response uh, uh, we got uh, in the in the questionnaire survey. So we will uh, go back to this point, but uh, uh, now I will show you uh, the difference uh, among the three countries. Again, we can see the midpoint, uh, you know, response uh, style for the Japanese case. And then uh, uh, in uh, Spain, uh, they have higher uh, support for the, uh, the uh, hydrogen refilling stations. Okay, compared to the Japan and then uh, Norway. Okay, uh, Norway had an uh, accident at the uh, hydrogen refilling station, as shown in the previous pages. Uh, we uh, had a multi-group analysis uh, between the unaware of hydrogen incident and then aware of uh, incident. It is a part of the uh, knowledge on the hydrogen, and then uh, we compare the difference between the two groups. And then if you look at the, uh, this uh, perceived risk probability between the unaware group and then aware group, uh, you see that uh, by getting more knowledge, uh, the midpoint uh, response style decreases. Then they can answer, uh, may, uh, they, are, they can answer decisively or some, uh, uh, you know, the, with the confidence. Then, the, the mid category, uh, the number of mid category, uh, share of mid category decreases as we can understand, right? So uh, other uh, questions or others have the same, have the same patterns of the uh, change, uh, difference between unaware group and aware groups, right? And then on the risk consequences, the same, and then, uh, uh, you know, neutral or midpoint uh, response, the, the share is decreasing uh, because uh, uh, by the getting the knowledge on the, uh, you know, the knowledge or the aware of the uh, incidents, okay? Uh, and then also uh, the uh, risk information seeking uh, behavior. In this case, uh, uh, we also have the decreased uh, midpoint but all, uh, the, not only that, but uh, you know, higher importance are uh, observed for aware uh, incident aware groups. So it might be a slightly different from the uh, perception, but uh, on the risk information seeking behavior becomes stronger if they know the accident or higher knowledge and then so on. Okay. So we uh, estimated the uh, uh, structural equation modeling to understand the relationship among uh, the, the knowledge and also the, uh, the trust in the uh, technology and then uh, some emotions uh, uh, to affect directly to the, to the perceived uh, accident probability and then the accident consequence and then uh, on the risk information seeking. Uh, in the, uh, we would like to check the difference between the two groups, okay? And then uh, uh, in a uh, uh, accident unaware group, we have we got the knowledge enhance uh, the results showing the knowledge enhances public trust, and then uh, uh, risk perception is influenced by the effects, uh, positive and negative effects, and then. Uh, only this consequence, not uh, this uh, accident probability affect the uh, risk information seeking. So it means that uh, uh, 
uh, accident consequence is more important for the, for the change of the uh, uh, risk information seeking behavior for the uh, accident unaware group. And then uh, for the accident aware group, we had a slightly different uh, uh, result here. And then one of them is uh, effects of objective knowledge on trust are weakened. And then also uh, positive effect doesn't alleviate risk perception for the risk uh, for accident aware group. So they are more uh, affected by the negative effects. And because uh, they are aware of uh, the incidents, yeah, we we guess. Okay, so uh, some thoughts on the, uh, maintaining public image of hydrogen refueling station uh, post accident. So um, enhancing public knowledge of uh, hydrogen energy increases public trust in hydrogen technology, and then uh, both subjective objective knowledge have uh, indirect effect on the two dimensions of risk perception. And then uh, a positive effect doesn't alleviate risk perception for accident aware group. And then finally, uh, perceived risk consequence, not probability affect desire for you know, information. Okay, so information is very important, we think. And then uh, we are trying to understand the, the, uh, the moderating effect of uh, risk information on the uh, hydrogen deferring station acceptance. Yeah, and then uh, we did the uh, stated preference experiment that's shown here. Uh, yeah, we asked about uh, uh, the, you know, the, some uh, uh, characteristics of the hydrogen fueling deferring station, and then and then level of support to these types of uh, uh, deferring station, and then uh, this shows the um, experimental design, uh, including site type, and then. Uh, hydrogen supply and then hydrogen type and then site scale and then distance to the residence. This is a really important uh, parameter as uh, we discuss later. Uh, and then we found that uh, some characteristics affect the uh, higher uh, acceptance. And then uh, we see the petrol based uh, uh, station has a higher support because we they already have the gasoline station nearby, and also green hydrogen station, and then large one has a, 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 large, a higher support. And then the distance, I don't know why, but uh, higher support in uh, 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 closer uh, location. And then, uh, yeah, we, we came back to the this uh, middle category response uh, behavior. So we, the, we estimated generalized ordinary logic uh, regression analysis. And then, so we can distinguish the effect in a, uh, for the consistent facilitators here or inconsistent facilitator. In this case, uh, it only affects the you know, strong oppose, opponent to opponent and then neutral or something, and then not affecting this uh, supporting part. So it is called as uh, regarded as an inconsistent facilitator. And also we have a hindrance. It's a negatively affecting the, the, the support uh, or acceptance of the hydrogen deferring station. And then interesting one is uh, polarizing predictors. Okay? So that for the, for the opponent, it affects negatively. So it becomes a, a, you know, by a polarizing effect. And then the, for, the, for the supporters, we have uh, uh, we may have a, a positive effect on the positive side. So it make, makes a lower middle category response. And then uh, we have a very you know, small font, and I'm sorry for that, but I just want to uh, emphasize here, hydrogen knowledge level and the awareness of hydrogen accidents have the polarizing predictor because uh, we have a negative effect on the a negative side, lower acceptance level, and then uh, for the positive, positive effect on the uh, higher uh, acceptance level. So it may uh, uh, become the polarizing predictor and then also the lower middle point response style. So, so we, we can interpret that uh, getting more knowledge, uh, they can be sure 
to answer the question, and then they can choose extreme uh, response rather than just uh, uh, going to the middle point. So the import uh, the information or knowledge is a very important factor uh, to get the higher acceptance as well as uh, you know negative acceptance uh, in some cases, right? So I will skip this uh, and then. Uh, um, I will skip this part. Uh, I'm sorry for the yeah. So we about the uh, local resident samples. We uh, take the, took the samples from the around the actual hydrogen filling stations to see the difference between different from the uh, general public. And then you can see here. Uh, Already 3.6 million people reside within the 800 meter radius coverage area of a hydrogen refilling station. It is 2.8% of Japan's total population. And then you can see here the uh, population around the uh, refilling station in Kanto area, Tokyo area, and also in the Nagoya area. And then we uh, did the uh, uh, question survey, but unfortunately, not all the people live within the uh, two kilometer radius, but um, some of them are, are living within the two kilometer. And then uh, about the perceived risk likelihood between the general public and then local legends, there, there is not so much difference, but on the uh, perceived risk consequence, um, local legend has had a higher uh, perception on this uh, point. So we should be, <laughs> yeah, it is really um, perceived by the uh, local residents around the uh, hydrogen refilling station. We also estimate the same model, but uh, in the multiple group analysis, we have a uh, uh, strength to positive effect and then strength uh, the uh, negative effect for the <coughs> for the uh, uh, residents around the hydrogen refilling station. So we we interpret that uh, they are, they have more knowledge, and then uh, uh, because of the beginnity of the hydrogen refilling station, so they have uh, more uh, less uh, midpoint uh, response style, and then they can answer clearly on the uh, uh, the attitude and so on uh, because of the, this uh, types of subjective uh, variables. Uh, I will skip that uh, detail. Okay, so finally, uh, before concluding uh, my talk, I will introduce uh, some recent topics. Unfortunately, they are not well related to my study, but it is really interesting to uh, looking look at uh, in the near future or in my future studies, okay? First one is a hydrogen pipeline at Ubon City in Japan. Uh, I, I talked about, uh, you know, the uh, perceived risk on related to the hydrogen refilling station, but uh, uh, in this area, they, they will introduce a pipeline, okay? So the, the station is uh, located outside of this area, and then uh, through the pipeline, they will, uh, you know, the uh, distribute the uh, hydrogen to the to the place they need. So it, it might, uh, you know, alleviate the concern about the risk related to the station. It is similar to the uh, gas pipeline, and then they might be uh, might be better in some cases, and to alleviate the concern to some extent. Uh, next one is uh, financial support by Tokyo Metropolitan Government. Uh, I'm sorry for the Japanese, but uh, it means that the hydrogen refueling station of low cost 35 megapascal. So they, uh, and then also combined with the uh, car sharing of fuel cell vehicles at the station. Okay. So in that case, the egg and uh, chicken and egg uh, are, you know, provided uh, at once and then uh, you know, simultaneously. Then the Tokyo Metropolitan Government provides some subsidy or financial support for them. Okay, so they can overcome the, the problem of uh, chicken and egg, I think, to some extent. Okay, and then the final one is a fuel cell vehicle with 
plug-in electric. So uh, from Honda, uh, it includes a, a driving range of uh, 621 kilometer by fuel cell and also the 61 kilometer by electric. So even if the, the hydrogen filling station is not located nearby, I don't know, but uh, 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 they can still use the utilize this vehicle with uh, uh, plugging plugging in uh, to the to the to the uh, electric uh, network uh, or vice versa. Okay, so it might be uh, it might overcome the problem of the scarcity of the hydrogen refueling station to some extent. Again, okay, uh, this is the end of my presentation. Uh, current uh, fuel cell vehicle owners in Japan is mostly made of uh, 60 plus years old and then with a high social demographic status. It is a really tech enthusiast. And then uh, uh, on the policy incentive, free parking, free public parking, a toll exemption, and then free transit ticket may positively impact, but uh, only for the some segments of potential buyers. And then uh, enhancing public knowledge. Uh, increases public trust in hydrogen technology, and then perceived risk consequence, not probability, affect the desire for information, and also the acceptance of uh, hydrogen refueling station. And then finally, some incentives, uh, initiatives are in progress to break chicken and egg situation. Okay, that's all my uh, presentation. Thank you, and then arigato gozaimashita. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yamamoto. Very interesting and exciting presentation. Uh, so there have been heaps of actually text uh, in the chat box. Uh, let me just uh, read the most important ones. There was kind of you know discussion between um, uh, that Professor Kara Kokelman asked uh, that what is the hottest spot of uh, hydrogen fuel cell uh, vehicle refueling stations around the world and how is the um, fleet penetration. Um, I myself provided um, the Australian perspective um, figures and also Jason as well. Um, so I welcome actually everyone uh, from other countries uh, and other continents uh, to provide uh, more information. Uh, let me just go through the questions. Uh, so um, the, the first question from Cora is, um, she's wondering actually if uh, you also regularly and also everyone else uh, get regularly the wrong or unexpected a sign on a key mm. variable like a cost <laughs> price charging time when you uh you know in your sp survey uh, yeah. with uh, when you actually estimate the mean and a standard deviation right of the random um, factors yeah. yes i don't know um yes it is uh, not expected and then uh uh one uh, possible uh, interpretation is that uh, you know the respondents uh, does don't have uh, good knowledge on the you know situation and then uh, and then the state preference survey or um you know that the, the uh, hydrogen fuel vehicle is not really uh, realistic to the respondents. In that case, um, uh, respondents may uh, answer uh, differently or you know, misunderstanding of the uh, situation. Or say um, for the for the non car owners, they are you know uh, behaving uh, in a strategic answer, not really uh, you know the true uh, feeling, but uh, you know the driving the the, the policy uh, decisions and so on. So we should be careful about this kind of uh, results. That's my guess. That's that, true. Uh, I, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I imagine like because one of your finding was that uh, the majority who uh, expressed their willingness to, to buy um, a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, they are a male uh, with, with good income, etc. So yeah. may, perhaps price is not really, you know, they don't really care about the price, they maybe care about other aspects of um, the technology itself. That could be right. one perhaps. <laughs> reason um okay and then uh, another question is uh what is the share of in-home versus out of home uh, refueling for hydrogen vehicles versus battery electrics because you know you can charge your battery electric at home but what about you know the share of in-home and out of home refueling for hydrogen um is there a even 
and in home what, what, what uh, hydrogen refueling. In, in home hydrogen refueling, it's not uh, possible. It's not really possible, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so perhaps you can unmute yourself and ask your question or. Um, yeah, okay. So maybe I can go with the next part of uh, Jason's questions that are there similar concerns about range and station availability? And mm -hmm. uh, well, the range of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are longer, but um, uh, you're much more likely to refuel out of the home. Uh, well, definitely that's the only option for the hydrogen uh, mm -hmm. charging right. out of home. Yeah, so what are your thoughts on that? Are you asking to me? Or... Oh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so in terms of the, uh, is there any still concern about range and station availability? Ah, okay, sorry. From yeah, yeah, it's true. Yes. Yeah, but uh, about the range anxiety, it is uh, lower than the battery electric vehicle, right? Definitely. Sure. And then, uh, yeah, looking at the uh, density of uh, a hydrogen station, uh, it is a uh, uh, still lower than the electric uh, charging uh, stations, and uh, so it uh, you know the the balance between the two uh, may determine the uh, you know the availability of the um, and then uh, subjective availability of the uh, station. But uh, I think uh, uh, you know the the location of the hydrogen fuel cell uh, station is still skewed into the uh, you know well populated area only so we need uh, some uh, you know the optimization uh, planning uh, to uh, you know encourage people to use the hydrogen That's yes. good. because uh, so electricity you can get uh, anywhere in the in the in the even country, from home, right if, if okay, it is a, a normal from, uh, yeah, at charging, home. right yeah That's it's a really true. different yes, uh, yeah. yes. So because we're over time, let me just uh, ask oh, the last question. Uh, no, no, don't no worry. That, that was very interesting uh, talk. And that's why uh, that is actually um, uh, and lots of uh, discussions. So the last question was uh, from Jan Dirk. Uh, and uh, he um, he's asking regarding the relation to free uh, public transport tickets mm. as incentive. Mm. So he, he's asking about what was the relationship? What, why would this be particularly interesting to fuel cell vehicles? Uh, uh, yes, uh, not not really well connected, but uh, we we looked at the literature, and then some uh, country, uh, uh, you know, tried such kind of benefit uh, for the maybe um, related to the uh, environmental consciousness or something, and then uh, you know, public transit is also one of the you know, tools for the reducing carbon emissions, right? So the the parking uh, these two maybe you know the attractive to some of some segments not all but uh, you know the uh, uh, uh decreasing uh, petrol dependency or some uh, you know kind of uh, you know zero carbon emission throughout that that, that chicken and egg problem actually is, is really interesting. And I myself right. actually embarked upon um, developing a system dynamic modeling, yes. looking at the demand and supply on both sides. So I assume that, you know, uh, there will be uh, lots of uh, research uh, popping up uh, in the future years because this hydrogen fuel cell vehicle is just, uh, you know, it's one of the new technologies that particularly is, is very relevant to high, uh, heavy vehicles, train, plane, uh, vessels, and also trucks. Uh, so um, uh, thank you so much, Professor Yamamoto, for your very insightful presentation. Uh, so there are actually some discussions in the chat box. Uh, please uh, feel free to stay in the room if you have uh, some time uh, spared for us. And um, keep contributing actually to the discussions and everyone else as well. Thank you so much.